the parable of the Good Samaritan, a story that is well known. Uh, people that goes to church regularly knows it. And I would assume that the wide majority of people outside the church have somehow heard it or have a vague knowledge about it. In fact, I would almost say that we think we knew it. And to the point that we believe that, oh, yeah, I heard that one, nothing to learn about it. Next. Well, this week, I would like to explore with you the beginning of this passage. When a lawyer asked Jesus, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And in this context, as it's often in the biblical text, the concept of eternal life is not uh, what we might think. It's not like this afterlife that lasts forever. It's more a question of a life of quality in the here and now. So this lawyer is not asking about what will happen after his death and how it can get there. It's the question about to live. How, how should he live to have this quality of life? And Jesus replied, well, what's in the scripture? Good place to start looking. And the man says, well, it's basically, you shall love the Lord God and love your neighbor as yourself. And then the lawyer said, well, who's my neighbor? And that's a very good question. Because we struggle with that. Who's my neighbor? Who should I care for? Jesus answered, but as Jesus often do in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, it does not, he does not give a clear answer. I guess it would be too simple for them, also for us. No, no. So Jesus answered in form of this story of a traveler that is attacked, robbed, and left have dead by the road. Then a priest and a Levite come by and do nothing. In fact, they, you know, it's almost change, like you know, like people when they change the sidewalk just to go around something. Well, it's almost what they do. They go on the other side of the road just to make sure they do nothing. And then there's Samaritan come, and Samaritan once again are not. For a good Jew in Jesus' time, not nice people. They might be neighbor, but they were really, really, really not get along. Uh, not good. Not good relationship. He's not supposed to be the hero of the story, and yet he's the one who approach, have compassion, and do something to save the poor traveler. And like I said... I believe that Jesus was trying to tell the, the lawyer and tell us that this concept of who's my neighbor, who should I care for, who should I love, and by definition, who should I, you know, who, who, who am I ought to love, who I have to love, who I have to love in half time, and who's out of the list, basically. Well, Jesus says it's not a question of a list. Like, you have to love them, then you don't have to. It's not a question of do's or don't. But it's a question of a lifestyle. A question of ethics, behavior, philosophies that guide our life. Who is our neighbor? Well, the question is up to us. And Jesus says, it's whoever we see, we notice, who need our presence, our help. Regardless of origin, of uh, if we're comfortable with them or not, regardless is this person 
even regardless if person desire help or not. That's totally irrelevant. It's about being open to the opportunity. Being ready to accept, to be vulnerable by going to someone else that we might not know. It's about be ready to reach out, to be vulnerable. All those things will tell us who is our neighbor. And like this concept of eternal life, it's not a question of quantity. How much people are we ready to put on our list of and, and brag about it? It's a question of quality of relationship. Are we ready to be open to whoever we meet on the road, regardless if it fits our description of a good person or a bad person? It's a real struggle for many of us. But Jesus wants to push us just a little more. He said, the person in front of you does not have to earn to be considered a neighbor. Is that person is your neighbor? The question is, will you be like the Levite and the priest that walk by? Or will you try to go, go and do the same that the Samaritan? Maybe to approach. Maybe to try. It does not mean that we have to try to do everything. But we have to try to do something. And that's at the core of this story. Thank you once again for watching. This is summer, so I hope you're enjoying, you find a way to appreciate this time of the year. And I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Bermet, and take care until next time. Bye-bye.